Internet, hello, you lovelies. Let's do the last of our D23 coverage with Disney Animation. We're going to cover everything directly at Disney. We're also going to cover Pixar. These are the eight biggest announcements. If you're new to this page, I do comic book news and reviews as well as movie news and reviews. And I've done a week's worth of D23 coverage with everything from Marvel to Star Wars toward their live action stuff. And this is going to wrap all that out because there was so much news. I thought it was worth sharing in pieces, depending on what you're most excited about. If there's something here you're really excited about, please leave a comment below. What of these are you most stoked to experience? Toy Story 5 is easily my favorite, but Incredibles 3 is right behind it. We're going to talk about Zootopia 2. Lots of sequels, but a couple of original ones like LEO and Hoppers. Either way, leave a comment below. Going to be diving into all that. Also, leave a like in this video. And we are approaching 35,000 subscribers. And as of yesterday, it is a month to my birthday where I turn 36, trying to grow this to 36K by September 15th. Next little micro goal. I hate long intros. Let's dive in to Disney Animated, starting with Toy Story 5. Toy Story 5 is so important to me because I grew up with these Toy Story movies. Toy Story came out at the exact right time where I was kind of always Andy's age. Andy always felt like me. Not only was this the first feature-length CGI film, but it's one of my first memories in a movie theater that it felt like it was for me, not a movie I was watching because I just wanted to be at the movies. Like, I was seven, and that felt like it was made for me. And that was a really unique movie theater experience. And then, well, by the time you get to the third one, and he's going off to school, I was going off to school. The fourth one is that, that I personally think the fourth one's great, but that left turn of, like, a new plot point. How does Woody come back, by the way? We'll find out with five. But I think that this movie is kind of always, this franchise has always kind of followed my, my timeline in life. So I love that this one is about what happens with the world of technology taking over toys. This movie's about technology versus toys, which is oh so very real, considering how much therapy is developing for kids' detachment from iPads, considering how much people just hand their kids their phones. There's so much technology in children's hands, their brains aren't cooked yet. There's so much lack of tactile that I'm fascinated how they explore without pissing everyone off. And I'm talking to a, a phone right now, a piece of technology that is like a limb to me. Technology has taken over so many things, I'm curious how Toy Story addresses that, and I think it's a genius way to keep up. Like I said, one through four all felt like it was hitting me at the right time. This one, I don't have kids yet, but I know it's going to be an issue of how soon my kid gets an iPad or a phone or any bit of technology. So I'm very curious about this one. Also, there's a plot of what if there were 50 Buzz Lightyear stuck in toy mode as your antagonist. You got toys versus tech. You got all these Buzz Lightyears running rampant. This seems awesome to me. Again, how does Woody come back? I have so many questions. This one is my easily most anticipated because of how much Toy Story means to me. Cannot wait to check this one out. Are you excited? Let me know in the comments below. Because one I know you're going to be excited about is they also announced Incredibles 3. Now, Incredibles 3 is... I mean, we live in a superhero age. We live in this giant Marvel and DC Universe age. And Incredibles came out when these movies weren't nearly as big. They were big, but it wasn't this so then we got Incredibles 2, I think, in part because of the success of the superhero culture. Now, Incredibles 3 is going to be riding that wave in an all-new way. I mean, I think that even if you think superhero fatigue has ruined things, you can't argue that when one of these movies comes out and they're good, they're huge. I want to know what a movie looks like in that era. Not when things are going swimmingly, not before things are big, but what do you do when things are, are so important? So... I really love Brad Bird directing Fantastic Four effectively with the first one. I like the evolution in the second one. I'm really curious what this third one is. It's too early days to give any plot, but just the announcement of Incredibles 3 was a huge surprise at D23 and a huge excitement for me as someone that loves these movies. I'm really looking forward to it. All right, next up, let's talk about Dream Productions, which is an Inside Out between pool. It takes place between Inside Out 1 and 2. They also announced that Inside Out 2 is officially the largest animated film of all time. The biggest animated movie of all time is in theaters right now. It made a billion a couple weeks ago. It keeps growing. That's crazy. Inside Out 2 is huge. It's interesting because in my circles, it's liked, but it's not like a, a cultural zeitgeist shift. I'm really curious about people with kids, people with families. Like, what's it like outside of LA and outside of like this little pocket of journalism where I haven't heard a lot about it? I enjoyed the hell out of the movie. Would never have guessed it's the biggest animated film of all time. Again, let me know. I really want to hear about your experience with how huge Inside Out 2 is, because that came out of nowhere for me. But this betweenquel is about the dreams our lead has between the first and second film. There was a, 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 like a five or six year gap between these two movies, and I'm really curious about what they do to develop her through that era, but also how her dreams inform her personality and her core beliefs and all the things we explored in Inside Out 2. I think this is a really exciting way to do what Inside Out does best, which is 
really illustrate visually and narratively the importance of mental health and acknowledging certain parts of your personality and, and having different dynamics of what makes you who you are, but using your subconscious instead of your conscious. I'm really excited for this show. It's a show uh, on Disney+, Plus, and I'm really excited to see what parts of personality and uh, who we are they explore. Really excited for this announcement. Next up, we've got Zootopia 2. They had this beautiful little opening with Jason Bateman basically describing uh, the animalification of everything coming out of Disney. They had like a great Deadpool 1. They had a bunch of the announcements all animalized because Zootopia. And then we had Jennifer Goodwin herself come out and basically describe a little bit of the tone of Zootopia 2. This one is going to deal directly with reptiles. It is going to be reptiles as the villain, and we got our first reptile with Gary, as voiced by Kihi Kwan. Now, this is exciting news. I I love this dude. He's adorable. I cannot wait to hear a voiceover from him. I cannot wait to hear him as one of these creatures. I think this is perfect. Uh, I really like the first Utopia. I think it's really funny. I think it's clever. I think it's inventive. I think it's everything you want from animation. So I'm excited for this one. I did not know this was coming, so I'm, I'm so in. Speaking of animated sequel updates, we also got some updates on Moana 2. The Rock was there, our lead actress was there, all of the singers from the movie were there, and they performed a live action rendition of one of the songs. went into new footage. Now we'd seen some footage from Moana 2 about a year back. This was more complete, uh, more story driven, and it was bigger. It, it showed our villain a bit. It talked about her being a big sister now, the, the, the island changing, and it really showed the joy and celebration of this culture again. And I really love that about Moana. Like there's this, even if the things get dire in the movie, there's a celebration of this culture. And I think it's beautifully done in the film, but also on stage when they present it. So this was a really cool presentation. It has me excited for the next Moana. I'm really just generally vibing with these animated sequels as families get to learn, you know, important messages and morals, but also celebrate different cultures in big bombastic musical ways. I think that's what Disney does great. So Moana 2, I'm in. And another sequel before we get to the two originals they announced Frozen 3. Now, Frozen 3 is very, very early days, but they did show us something that we've never had released before, which is an early pre image that shapes kind of the tone of things. It, it, to me, felt like this was the outline if it was a, you know, live action film, like what you'd want to launch from, like the, the one pager of what the film's about was this image. That's intriguing because not only is this the duality of light and dark, we deal with the sisters. Obviously, we've we've had that conversation in the first two Frozen films, but interested about this villain here and like the shadowy aspect and what else there is to explore. So Frozen, the first one, phenomenon. Second one, I really liked how hallucinogenic and intense and and a lot more, seemed more adult in its intensity. Uh, But I don't feel like the conversation around Frozen 2 is as big as Frozen 1. I'm curious how it comes back. What other stories they have to tell? And this is our first image and just the general announcement. Very curious. What do you guys think? Let me know below. And then we got two original films announced. One of them had been announced, but we hadn't really seen a lot about it was Elio. Elio looks so fun. Uh, It's this robot with the most adorable voice and it basically interacted with us as a crowd. I have no idea what this is going to be, but adorable robot, crowd interactivity. The presentation was great. I'm a sucker for this genre of, uh, you know, kind of cute whimsy and, and helping kids cope with how dark the world can be. Elio looks charming. I'm in no matter what. And then Hopper was, to my knowledge, the first announcement uh, at all of this movie. I think it's a brand new thing out of D23, and it stars Bobby Moynihan and John Hamm. And apparently it's the ability to hop into the minds of animals, I believe, is, is how I interpreted things. So I'm very curious about all the body swap stuff, but used comedically instead of, like, Cronenberg horror I'm very curious about John Hamm uh, being an animal at any point in time. I love the Bo- Bobby Moynihan, John Hamm dynamic that I'm sure we're going to get. Both are comedic powerhouses. It, the animation looks charming and cute. This looks like a lot of fun. I'm, I'm very curious about this new, probably a couple years out, announcement. So that was all the stuff out of the animation panel at D23. What are you most excited about? 
are you more cautious than I am for Toy Story 5? Because I'm just blindly excited. Are you excited for Incredibles 3? Are you more excited for one of the originals like Hopper or Elio? Do you think Frozen 3 can capture the magic of the first? Let me know in the comments below. Lots of animated stuff. Those were the eight that I really wanted to talk about. Also, let me know in the comments below what else you want to see from this page. I'm really curious what you guys like now that D23 coverage is over. What else would you like to see? I do lots of comic book stuff, but I also love doing movie stuff. So I want to hear from you guys. Please hit that subscription bell. I want to grow this to 36K by September 15th. Also, please hit a like so YouTube knows you like this. And please do something kind for someone today. Just, just be good. You know, world's dark. People need it. All right. Much love. I'll see you guys soon.